What's up guys and welcome to the channel. Today we will be talking about Bermuda Triangle. Now, some people really like this deck, some people like playing it, some people don't mind facing it, but a lot of people really don't like the way this deck plays. Regardless of what camp you're on, I think it's important to talk about a deck like this also. This was the deck that I wanted to prepare for this month. I crafted eight triple rares and seven double rares for this deck. Cause I hadn't built a full Bermuda Triangle deck in a very long time. But I, I do like the play of style. I'm not the best Bermuda Triangle player, but between seeing other people play this in my server's tournaments and um, seeing what my other teammates are playing, I was able to get this nice amalgamation of what other people are doing and what I'm doing. And I was able to find a list that works for me. So I wanted to share that with you guys today. Remember, this is just a conversation starter, not a conversation ender. So if you don't like my list or you prefer other texts in the text slots, let me know what your texts are in the comments below. I would love to hear your deck choices. I'll kind of go from the grade threes and go down. So I really like Eternal Idol Pacifica. It was uh, the best way to play duos pre-Legion and it is still a amazing tech in duos after they've got their Legion support. It's just a great finisher and it's great for helping you clean up in the late game and get through PGs and the mirror against Kagura who tends to get almost as many PGs as you do. So this card feels super good. I was originally playing this at one when I only owned two at the beginning of this month. I loved it so much. I got two more and now it's on my heel trigger. Love this card. Uh, the 13th slot, which is like our last grade three tech slot. We have the planet idol Pacifica. It's just a break ride. If you don't like the break ride, you can play right or reindeer, but they both feel lackluster compared to planetary idol Pacifica and your other duo legions. They, they just don't feel as strong. So I think like this just feels the best. Um, and then of course, yeah, we play four of the Victoria and four of the Nemuel. Nemuel for two CB, you can add two of the same car card to your hand uh, that you bounce. So if you bounce a PG, you add two more. Now you have three PGs. That is insane value for only a Soul Blast and two Counter Blasts. And then you also get an extra crit, which is kind of scary because your opponent's gonna have, have a hard time finishing you off, but you just have four PGs in your hand you have resist cards, and then you just have this crit swinging in on their vanguard. It's quite scary. Um, that's the grade threes. Uh, grade twos are pretty standard for my list, except for this one. I play the Pacifica 12k because I like using Pacifica as a finisher to clean up the game. And this scales really well with Pacifica, even if I don't have a booster. So that's why I choose to play this. There's a ton of other good options though. And then of course, like Roan, star of the deck, uh, use this in the early game, use this in the late game. Either use this to bounce quantities to draw cards or bounce Vepar to duplicate more cards or bounce PG to get another PG. She does everything for you as far as gaining resources and she scales and she also works on Van and Rearguard now, which is super amazing. It, this was not the case a while ago. Um, other than that, everything else is standard. I guess we can talk about Vepar because if you're not familiar with this deck, you might not be familiar with how Vepar functions. Basically, you bounce this, you target something on your board, and you can add a copy of that card from your deck to your hand. So if you have two open CB and you're doing a Roan PG play, you can use something else to bounce the Vepar, duplicate a PG, and then use your Roan skill in, in the battle, duplicate another PG. It's another way to generate two PGs in one turn to your hand. So. That, that's pretty much the great twos. I will say that Quansi, just as a aside, this resist is super important against LJ and the Paladin matchups, which Paladins are still super popular right now. So, you know, being mindful of how you use this resource is really good. And then of course, in the grade ones, we have, you know, four of the 6K filters. I think this is like a necessary card here. It's gonna help you get through your deck, help you find those pieces that you read Legion um, and put back into the deck, those PGs. Those quantities, those other great twos. Uh, it's going to help you dig so you find the triggers as well. You have to play PGs. This deck is really good because it's very good at finding the resources, specifically PGs. Most decks struggle with that. This deck does not. Um, although they're having games where I have with PG. And of course, there you can play other stuff in these five slots. I think you do need to play some count of the counter charger plus whatever you want. So I've chosen to do four copies of the Korra, which is the Soul Blast 2, Counter Charge 2. 
and one copy of the Ur Earl Earl. Uh, it, this is difficult. <laughs> it's, it's your Soul Blast draw card. It's basically your Den draw. Uh, I did try the Chikora, which is a 7K. You bounce it. CB1 gives something plus 4K. If you're struggling to hit numbers with rear guards, by all means, you can try Chikora. There's a bunch of other good grade ones that you can play. It's you don't have to play my grade one lineup. This just seems to be what works for me. And you're not always going to need to Soul Blast and use your skill. It's just one of those things. When, when you do need it, it's going to be there. So that's the deck guide. Another big chungus deck guide, right? Six minutes. Wow. Maybe I can edit this down. But with that, we're going to go to the games. Uh, Yeah.